morning. Channel 4's Chris Parento spoke to the owner of the Port St. Lucie gun store where Omar Mateen purchased the weapons he used illegally. First, though, I want to check back in with Bruce. Yeah, the latest on where the investigation is heading now, Bruce. Kamasi, essentially, the investigators just plow forward. There apparently is nothing new to report because we've not gotten word from Orlando police about the next scheduled news conference. Pulse nightclub is about two blocks down the road. You have crime scene texts from FDLE, the Orlando Police Department, the Orange County Sheriff's Department, and even the FBI in there. They're still mapping the area, collecting as much evidence as they possibly can. Meantime, on the federal level, they're trying to learn more about 29-year-old Omar Martin. As a matter of fact, the FBI Director James Comey is trying to re-examine the FBI's contact with the gunman. Apparently, they've had contact on a number of different occasions over a 10-month period in 2013. In 2014, his name surfaced in connection with a suicide, uh, a suicide bombing that happened in Syria, a third time with another terrorist attack. And in the not-too-recent past, apparently, his name surfaced somehow in connection with the Boston bombing, the Boston Marathon. And remember the controversy in Paris with the drawing of the cartoon of the Prophet Muhammad? Apparently, he was questioned back then as well. They never found anything substantive, and they closed the investigation. But James Comey says we will be open, we will be transparent, and we're going to find out whether or not something fell through the cracks. Meantime, we continue to hear from those who were inside the Pulse nightclub at about 2 o'clock on Sunday morning when they thought was just part, something that was just part of the show turned out to be deadly gunfire. This particular patron says it's a night he'll never forget. You know, I, I said earlier today that this is, this is Orlando's 9-11. Yeah. New York had their 9-11. This is our, our, our rendition of 9-11. Yeah. And, and we will never forget. It, it's part of what I've been doing. Uh, all day. I've got friends that can't make it to Orlando, that they're in other cities in Kissimmee and Miami and, and they're mourning and grieving. So I've taken it upon myself to put flowers at the memorial and, and be their representative as saying, I'm here for you and I'm going to mourn with you. The outpouring of support has been nothing short of phenomenal. One of the questions that people seem to ask most is, how did this man who'd been on the FBI watch list manage to get his hands on guns, two assault rifles, and a 9mm semi-automatic pistol? Well, the answer is he went to a gun shop down in Fort Pierce, and he passed the background check. Channel 4's Chris Parento talked to that gun shop owner. The owner of that gun store doesn't ever remember this shooter coming in trying to buy body armor from him. He says they never have and they don't currently sell body armor. I also spoke to a member of the mosque that the shooter went to. He says everybody there is still in complete shock. It was inside this Fort Pierce Islamic Center where the Orlando shooter worshipped. What it has done on the other side, it's the opposite, which has nothing to do with Islam. Adele Nevzi is on the board of directors at the center. He says he saw the shooter on Friday night during their final prayer of the day. He says the shooter usually went there to pray three times a week with his son, but usually kept to himself. And he's not the only one. He means there are many other people, they pray and they leave. So if it was only him, I will tell you, but no, there are many people, as soon as they are done with the prayer, they will leave. Nevzi says that nothing in the time he's known the shooter would have led him to believe that this was possible. Just a few miles south in Port St. Lucie, Ed Henson walked into his gun store, St. Lucie Shooting Center, on Monday afternoon to talk with ATF agents about the shooter purchasing his guns from that store. An evil person came in here and illegally purchased two firearms from us. And if he hadn't purchased them from us, I'm sure he would have gotten them from another local gun store in the area. Henson says the shooter passed full background checks on both weapons and waited the mandatory three-day period for the purchase of the handgun. Both weapons were purchased within about 10 days of the massacre. Henson doesn't remember if the shooter ever trained at his range. I don't know. We do a very big business here. Um, I guess that we're a security training facility. We do civilian stuff and all. And that's all I can tell you. <laughs> That member of the mosque told me that on Sunday night there were people driving by yelling some insensitive things at members of the mosque that were going to pray. He says they expect it, they don't like it, but they're hopeful that one day that won't happen and people will realize that acts like this aren't what they're about and aren't what Islam is about. In Port St. Lucie, Florida, I'm Chris Parento, Channel 4, The Local Station.